Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is taking a soil sample, a soil test of your yard. Uh, this will be my second video of my yard, my centipede grass yard in Louisiana for this year. I said I was going to try to do a, a more thorough, detailed job in documenting what I'm doing because I only because um, I, I'm no yard expert, I'm no lawn expert, I'm no soil expert, but I do a lot of um, uh, research. And I just have found on the internet that there's not a lot out there for centipede grass. And I know the reasons is what you call lazy hands grass. It doesn't like a lot of nutrients. So I'm not selling anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, I don't have anything against people that are trying to sell you anything because my mentors are selling things and I think they're selling great products. But what I want to talk to you about today is taking a soil sample on your grass because that's, that's one of the first things you need to do. Really, I probably I should have done this. They say the optimum time to do it is January. I don't know if that's predominantly for uh, northern grasses. I don't know why you have to do it that early because really spring and summer is the optimal time for uh, applications and such for at least for centipede grass in the summer. So two different kinds of soil tents. Yes. All right, Tess, I want to talk about the first one is from the uh, from here in Louisiana, the LSU Ag Center. And that's what I have always used, and I have gotten a soil, a soil test every year, at least once a year for the past five years. Now, a lot of people, the, the perfectionists, the, law, the yard experts will say twice a year. You need to get one in the fall as well. Uh, if you want to stay on top of your game and see the results of what you put down, I may even do that for the first time this year is get two in one year. But anyway, this is the one I have always used. All you do, if you're in... Um, uh, Louisiana or if you're in a town in, near a university they probably have some kind of uh, uh, affiliated center for where a horticulturist is. Uh, ours is called the LSU Ag Center. I'm in northeast Louisiana, you know, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, West Monroe, Louisiana actually. So this is what I've always used. It's simple. You take different soil samples from, um, I'll talk about that in a second, the details from different parts of your yard and you uh, send it off and these uh, little Ziploc bags to LSU or whatever university you're in, they'll send it back and they'll give you an online and probably a paper, uh, they'll mail you results in paper of what your pH levels on your soil, what your soil needs are, nitrogen, phosphorus, micronutrients, uh, and such. Okay, this year I want to try something different. My mentors um, seemingly use this, this test, it's called a soil savvy test got it off amazon i don't remember how much it cost but it wasn't expensive i know i would have remembered if it were but uh here's the deal and it's it's simple actually it's really simpler than this one but it comes with sorry it's just me my son's not here i'm having to do all this on my own a little um container like this i, I guess it's water and capsule in, capsule in it okay so we'll that's what i'll put my soil once I get it ready to, to uh, put it in here and it comes with this scoop, I'll scoop in my soil and put it in here. Then you mail it off. Then within seven to ten business days, they sent you put it in this envelope, I think. Yes, to, pack, to send it off. And uh, within seven to ten business days, Soil Savvy will send you back an analysis, an easy to read. I've seen examples online. Uh, from the lawn care nut and from uh, Matt and Martin from the grass factor those two guys and Pete from GCI turf are my three mentors so if you're looking for um, knowledge on uh, lawn care those three people I just mentioned um, as well as uh, I forgot the guy from Loncology I forgot his name but he has a YouTube channel Loncology he's actually a soil expert that's the man behind um, the company, the next product with all those biostimulants that people are uh, applying. That it's a brand new, it's like slave and year old, all these new uh, ingredients that they're uh, allowing you to put down to, uh, to condition your soil. And actually they have something called aerate that's supposed to take the place of poor aeration, which is a big deal. I haven't tried that. I've heard a lot of wonderful things about it. I'm just kind of waiting to see. It's not a quick, it's not a quick fix. Hold on a video, and here's my son there. I'm doing a YouTube channel. Hold up, son. Sorry about that. I hope that didn't mess it up. My son just drove by with a friend in his neighborhood. So anyway, um, 
Yeah, I look at a lot of yard experts, but the problem with all the research, and I've looked at hundreds of videos, hundreds of the websites, and there just is not a lot for centipede grass, which is what I have centipede, centipede grass in the south. Like I said, there's reasons for that doesn't require a lot of nutrients, but it's still, you gotta, you gotta do certain things because it has its own problems like any other grass. Okay, so soil test. This is what you gotta do. Uh, uh, yard butler core aerating tool. But I think because the, we've had such hard rain, so, so much rainfall, it would not allow me to pull up the soil. So what I'm using now, this is a, a pro planting tool. Got this off Amazon. Amazon is your friend. And I pulled up one plug already. This is six inches. You probably want to get, you want to get at least four to six inches down in your soil. So what I'm doing is I'm taking up plugs like this. Now, here's the same thing. You saw the small little container that they, can, that, that they, um, scent in our soil savvy i can't do this with it. anyway i just showed you to it says it's a small little container that's i guess ha at least halfway full of water so you're not going to have a lot of room to put a lot of soil in that in that container to be sent off so what you could do is one of two things you could either buy multiple sample test kits or what you can do is just take multiple samples in different parts of your yard and then do it out there's a couple things i'm gonna tell you to do in a second and then just take uh mix them all together real well and just put a, a combination sample in that one little small container but here's the thing unless you're going to buy another soil test or uh and that's with soil savvy now i will say this the one from the lsu ag center they have like uh different several i don't know if it's three to six different ziploc bags so you have more room to send different uh soil samples from different parts of your of your um land of your uh, yard but this is just one small sample so but here's the deal in my yard you know i don't have a lot of trees i have this one tree that doesn't apply a lot of shade it doesn't give a lot of shade because it's small it's not real dense and then I have a little cypress tree over there other than that and a few in my uh flower bed there are no there are no trees so basically this entire area in my, my front yard gets basically the same amount of sunlight uh it's not shaded there's no there's really no differences that would really cause me as far as i know any reason to give uh you know 10 different soil samples from this area because it's predominantly the same maybe a slight difference over there on the side of my yard because it's a slope and i do notice that there are when i get my soil sample uh samples back there for some strange reason the ph level is a little different a couple other levels are different on the slope side of my grass not quite sure maybe it has something to do with my irrigation system and drainage but anyway so i think even with one soil test uh, from soil savvy i think you'll be fine unless you're wanting to do a separate soil test for like your flower beds which I do that too. Actually, I probably use the LSU Ag Center for that one. Soil savvy for the one in my yard. And if you have a different part of your yard, with say that's real shady, then you'll probably want to give a different soil sample for that type of the yard. I mean, for that portion of the yard, because it's just different environmental conditions. So, but for me, since it's pretty much wide open, full sun, I'm just going to use what I've got. I will take three or four of these plugs. I'm gonna take the bottom part off and the very top part off, just the bottom, because you don't want any roots, grasses, or anything else in it. I'm gonna clean it out, and then I'm gonna get all the junk out of it, and then I'm gonna mix it all together thoroughly. I'm going to let it sit in this bucket and dry, probably inside of my garage, for 24 hours, okay? You want it dry. Didn't tell you all these details on the directions, but I watched several um, videos from my mentors. I was telling you, Pete from GCI touched specifically on my soil sample one on this one. Um, these are great guys. They're great. Th those are the experts. I'm just kind of an additional. If you have centipede grass, then you might want to watch and su subscribe to my channel um, because my my you know just what I do seems to work, and I follow them, and then I go beyond and 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 to kind of specialize in, in my turf type centipede, which like, again, there's just not, even when I contact these experts and ask them questions about centipede, you can tell they're like, oh God, they don't like centipede grass because that's just not their thing when you're dealing with chemicals and all this kind of stuff because um, 
it's just a, it's kind of its own beast. But anyway, let me see if I can pull this up with one hand. Yeah, okay, like this. Now, because it's been raining so harsh, I'm probably going to have to push this down to come through the other side. There you go. Of my plug. <laughs> Hard to do this. All right, so this, way, this is what it looks like when it comes out. So I will take off this bottom part, this top part, and any of these stems. You don't want stems, leaves, roots, anything like that. You want nothing but soil. I will take probably one more of these just from, you know, just three different, maybe between 20 feet in between samples areas of my yard. Mush them, kind of uh, take the parts off, kind of probably take all the stems out, crumble them up, let them sit 24 hours, like I said, and dry. Then what you're gonna do is put them um, in. Once you get your, uh, probably shouldn't close this. Once you get your sample and it's mixed up thoroughly and it's dry, all you'll have to do then is just take this little scoop, put this in your little sample. Like I said, see, that's more than half. It's like, that's, gosh, that's, what, that's almost, that's more than three quarters water. So you're not going to have much. But it will still be a good aggregate, I think, consolidated uh, sample of my yard. And then in seven to ten days, they'll send you back uh, a report telling you, um, what you what you have and what you need. Now, the advantage of this one over the other one, uh, I think it might cost it costs a little bit more. You can, don't, don't don't get as many sample packets as you uh, would with this one. Like I said, I probably use this one for my flower bed. Uh, I would suggest stay staying with the same one. I wouldn't switch back and forth. That way, like next this file or next year, when I want to go compare this year's results from after I make any kind of amendments or applications or whatever, uh, you'll be able to see you know the comparison, true compare, more true comparison between the same test company i wouldn't want to switch back and forth when i'm comparing my results from what i have done throughout the growing season what have you uh but anyway uh this soil test tells you what is readily available in your soil uh just because your soil has this test might tell you over here you got a lot of nitrogen or whatever in your soil okay well you know what you got a lot of thatch you got a compact got a lot of compaction you got other issues in your lawn that nitrogen may not be able to penetrate deeply enough into the roots of your plants, or in my case, grass or what have you, in your flower beds, your plants, trees, shrubs, or whatever, to be able to, uh, for uptake, to be used by these plants uh, in order for them to grow healthy. Now, this test, it tells you, if I understand correctly, exactly what macro and micro nutrients in your macro which is nitrogen phosphorus and potash those are the three numbers on the front of any fertilizer bag that you get it'll have a, like a or if it's like for your flower bed it might say triple 12 triple eight uh for your um for, for your turf it'll be uh 8 24 24 whatever anyway those are your three macronutrients but then you've got what is probably almost as important in centipede grass especially are your um are your micronutrients like calcium uh, magnesium and such so this one will tell you what is readily available in the soil to be uptake for uptake to be used right then by your grass or by your plants well this one just kind of tells you what you have this one tells you i can um in my grass i can um I can fertilize all day long, every month or whatever, but if I've got bad soil conditions that I've not taken care of, uh, that those nutrients or macro or micro may not be making their way down into my soil to be utilized by my plants. So not only am I wasting my money, I'm wasting my time too. So that's a big advantage for one understand that this, this soil test has over this one. Uh, on top of that, the, the test results, I've seen examples of them are very, very simple. And if you have a question, there's a phone number where you can call. Now, I have been able to find to call these people too. But to be honest, last year when I sent my soil test in for the, to my LSU Ag Center first, I blamed it on myself on the video. I said I did the soil test wrong, but actually I think they did it wrong. They sent me back results for St. Augustine grass and with trees and all this kind of stuff. And I have centipede grass and I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't even check trees on the box. So I had to redo it 
wait a month couldn't apply anything although i don't apply much then i ended up having to call i, I don't know anyway but these are th this is something new i think in the past it may have predominantly been available for crops use but they've made it available for the average homeowner um for their lawn where this i think is primarily probably directed more toward farmers for crops as well even though a lot of people you know use them for their lawn and i'm not saying they're bad this just seems to be more specialized easier to read you got a direct contact number and they oh this, another advantage they will tell you exactly what you uh what you need as far as whether you're going organic uh or whether you're going synthetic i saw that it might have been on the, on the sheet oh yeah here's an example right here it said for example if you needed a fertilizer that um 24 8 16 and that n is for nitrogen p is for phosphorus k is for potash it tells you synthetic and organic so that's pretty cool i, I don't think this one does that and this one is just not i don't think it's user friendly from what i've seen in comparison to this one so anyway so like i said just get your uh goes i was to go four to six inches deep with my little pr plugger over here that I got off Amazon. It's real easy to do. Uh, it's six inches and it actually has some three little rings, metal rings, I had to take mine off. So if you have, for some reason, you're planting seeds or whatever, you wanna go two inches or four inches, whatever, they got some little metal rings that you put on and you slip on here, you slip them off like I just did. And you can go uh, the full six inches, you can go four inches, two inches or whatever by putting those rings on it. So this is a kind of, I use this when I did uh, plugs, side plugs on my yard. Uh, did some transplanting from some side pieces and I might have even transplanted from, from my regular turf in my yard from, from bare spots when I did my uh, renovation and it's good for um, for uh, seeding and stuff like that. So it has multiple uses. So anyway, go ahead it's now. It's a good time to go. It's not too late, especially for centipede and south, to go ahead and do your soil test. When you get that back, that'll tell you exactly what you need to put on your grass. I wouldn't be putting any fertilizer or anything down right now. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, herbicides. You're, you're past the window and I are for pre-emergent herbicides. So really, uh, I'm not going to put any kind of amendments, any kind of fertilizer, anything down until I get this soil test back and let the experts tell me what I need. So anyway, I told you last video, my first video of the season, that what I had done was just rake up my yard basically, get all the dead debris out. A uh, couple things I still haven't done on my, <laughs> on my uh, on my flower beds it is time to fertilize those like i said and put sulfur down because i have a high, high ph level about acid loving plants uh the next thing you do, need to do is this right here and uh i may not even be doing uh, malorganite i said i was going to be putting malorganite down but i'm having to rethink that because my high phosphorus um level in my soil i'm going to wait and see what this if i still have it very high phosphorus i'm not going to even put my organite out so then i'll have to make a decision on that which is organic fertilizer but it has high phosphorus that middle number and i don't need that on my grass and lot centipede does not like to have high phosphorus so if you are using a fertilizer that has a high number in the middle might need to make sure you get this one of the uh, soil sample to make sure because that will cause centipede decline that will cause all kind of problems in your soil you will not be able to have a good uptake of your nutrients and a lot of problems so anyway get your soil test done it's time okay so we here i have okay you see with the sun uh like i said i'll have my son here he's the video guy to uh help out I'm kind of doing this on my own let me get over here in the shade i have two samples here this is the one ended up taken from my flower bed so it's going to obviously be a darker richer soil but these are the things you take out things like little pieces of mulch i've already taken out most of it stems of course if you have any rocks anything like that roots you want to get them out now i'm just kind of doing a little curse a little twigs whatever that might be mulch um, you want to take all that out. I've been putting in the trash. You want a pure sample. So I'm going to go through and continue to take out the little little twigs and stuff like this from both of my uh, yard sample, both my yard sample and my uh, garden sample. Once I kind of get this cleaned up, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to let this sit at least 24 hours. I'm going to let it sit in the sun right now because I know it's not going to rain or anything. If it's going to rain, I'll keep it inside like the uh, garage. But once I get it out, you get it out, you crumble it up real well each one crumble it up real well get all the stuff out and then whenever you get to go 
uh, take your little scoops, anything hard like that, you just want to get it out of there. Uh, it'll be a good sample because you don't want all the stuff that might change your analysis. You might not get the proper feedback. Is that a... Oh my gosh, it's an earthworm, I think. Uh-huh. See, that's good. That means I got a... Uh, earthworms are great for your soil. You see that in your soil, you know you're doing something right. That's... um. That's organic, that's live activity that's happening in your soil that's actually feeding your soil, nature's way of feeding your soil. You have a bunch of that, and you don't, have, you don't use a lot of synthetic um, chemicals, fertilizers and such over the years. You have enough of those, you probably won't even have to add, it. you may not have to even add anything to your soil or hardly anything to your soil because those, uh, they do all that microbial activity. Naturally, that's mother's nature's way of uh, feeding and taking care of your lawn, uh, aerating it and such, I would imagine. Get your soil sample in.